Hey, hey, I'm Shay Warner, and you are listening to Casual Cattle Conversations. If you are ready to explore different management practices and focus on improving your operation and the beef industry, this is the podcast for you. Welcome to the show. I'm so excited you are listening. Hey, hey, folks, it's Shay here, and welcome back to another episode of Casual Cattle Conversations. Today, we are going to be visiting with Kadra Kruger, and we are going to be talking about all things pre-breeding, conception, mineral programs, and she really breaks it down into practical bite-sized information and pieces that are easy to consume, easy to understand, and easy to apply. And so while you're listening to this episode, I want you to think about how you as a producer can build out your own team of experts to make sure that your cattle are being taken care of to the best of your ability. Um, Not that you're not already, but really it's hard for us as ranchers to be jacks and jills of all trades. We have so much going on that building out that team is really important. And especially with a a topic like nutrition, which has a lot of different components, but it's very impactful. So think about how you can build out your team, whether that's an extension agent, whether that's the sales rep you work with, whether that's a neighbor or a friend or someone else that you find knowledgeable. And maybe that's not in nutrition. Maybe that's in a, another area of your operation where you would just like a different s- support system. So that's your reflection question as you listen is while we're talking about this pre-breeding and mineral programs, think about how you can develop your own team as a rancher. Now, I do want to remind you that if you are looking for a speaker for your next event, whether that is a keynote, a panel discussion, or a workshop, I am booking gigs. And the easiest way to contact me is go to my website, hit the contact us page, and you can send me a message and that'll go straight to my email. With that, let's visit with Kadra. Alrighty, Kadra. Well, I am excited to have you on the show today. Pre-breeding, nutrition, conception, it's all such an important topic that we need to be reminded of as ranchers. And something that maybe I don't talk about enough on the show. So thank you for joining us today. Before we dive into the nitty gritty and the details, I would like to learn a little bit more about your story. I mean, what are you doing in the beef industry today? And why are you passionate about this topic? So I work for Alltech. Um, We're an animal health and nutritional company in which we specifically focusing on improving animal health through nutrition. Um, So I am one of the PhDs that works for the company. Um, My background is I went to K-State, got my master's and PhD, worked on the feedlot um, there at the K-State Research Unit. So um, that's kind of where a lot of my background lies is more within the feedlot side of the, or I should say that's where a lot of my training comes from is on the feedlot side of the industry. Um, And then shortly after that, uh, after I graduated, got a job with Hubbard Feeds on their beef technical team, which is a sub company to all tech, I guess you can say. Um, and then I've been working on mostly doing more cow calf stuff. Um, since I've been working with Hubbard, I still enjoy the feedlot stuff, um, but have learned a little bit more on the cow calf side of things since, since mm-hmm. doing that and in doing that and working for all tech, um, who I now work for full time. Um, I am one of their sales staff for Colorado and Kansas. Um, as well as still helping out with the nutrition side of things. Um, It's really become pretty obvious to me that the cow-calf producers really hold all the cards in our beef industry. I mean, they they really are the determining factor on how these cattle go on to perform later on in life, whether they're hitting the feedlots or they're being retained or sold in sales as replacement animals. So, um, So that's kind of where a lot of my interest stemmed from is, really realizing how much control the um, cow-calf producers have in our industry. Well, that is really interesting to hear you say, and we're going to dive more into that in this conversation. So more on that conversation, since you brought it up, you know, you just mentioned how cow-calf producers really hold all the cards, how the decisions they make really impact animal performance and profitability for mm-hmm. the rest of the segment or for the rest of the beef industry and all these other segments. So going off of that, why can you touch a little bit more on why pre-breeding mineral programs are so essential and the impacts that they do have down the line? Yes, absolutely. Um, so minerals, both the 
um, macros, which are going to be your calcium, phosphorus, you know, those minerals where if you look on a tag, it's listed as a percent and the micros, such as your trace minerals, um, they're both super important in how pretty much how a cow's entire body functions. I mean, she won't breed up very well if she's deficient in certain minerals. Um, her calves won't perform very well. So you're really having to set that cow's body up to where her body can actually breed and withstand that calf. So you need to make sure that her nutrient requirements are being met even before breeding so that she's ready to take on that task of growing a calf. And essentially what you're doing there as a producer, that calf is actually being programmed. Um, I know there's been the term fetal programming that's been talked about a lot, um, but that, that's essentially exactly what's going on with these cattle is if a cow is restricted in any kind of nutrient, it's not just her that's being affected, it's her unborn calf that she still has inside of her. So um, it's really important to make sure you're meeting her requirements so that, that, that cow can raise that calf adequately. That calf is at an adequate birth weight, adequate weaning weight, and it's a healthy animal as it continues on in its life. So, and all that starts with that pre-breeding nutrition. So does that, you know, fetal programming that you brought up, you, does that impact that calf's potential fertility too, outside of just its overall growth and performance? Absolutely. So you got to remember that um, the reproductive system doesn't only rely on protein and energy and that kind of stuff for that system to actually grow in utero, but it relies on trace minerals. And a lot of people forget, even though during that first trimester or the first part of gestation, that's just as an important part of gestation as the rest of it, because that's when those reproductive organs are starting to be developed within that calf. So absolutely, if there's a nutrient restriction, um, you'll see a, an animal that, or a calf or heifers, I think is where a lot of the research has been done, where she might not be ready to breed up as quickly as some heifers that came out of mothers that had adequate nutrition. So um, absolutely reproduction can be affected if an animal um, is not supplemented properly. So with that, I want to, let's start from the, con the beginning of with conception portion first and how mineral can help with breeding success rate. Mm -hmm. What are some things that producers need to be looking for on those mineral tags or thinking about with their mineral program if when they're focusing on the conception rate aspect? So I would say um, I don't like talking about just mineral for conception because even if you're feeding the best mineral program, if you don't have the adequate protein or energy for that cow, um, she's still not going to breed up. So you kind of have to talk about the whole picture when you're talking about a successful breeding season. You got to meet protein and energy requirements um, before you even think of anything else. Because I think of um, nutrition as kind of like a cascade of nutrients. You got to meet the higher demand of nutrients first, and then we kind of go, go down. Um, and with trace minerals being required in a smaller amount, um, even though they have a big impact on breeding, we still need to make sure protein and energy are being met as well. So that's my little soapbox soap right there on that. Um, but um, when you're looking at cows, I think when you're looking at what minerals you should be considering, you really need to know what forages you have, what's in your water, stuff like that. So you really need to have a base knowledge of what you're actually dealing with your own operation, because that's really going to affect what type of mineral that you may consider feeding your cows or not. Um, especially, um, out West here, I live in Colorado, so we deal a lot with molybdenum and sulfates, um, molybdenum and grass, sulfates and water. And that can really have a large impact on conception rates because they are, have the, excuse me, they do have the ability to tie up copper. Copper is an important mineral for reproductive health and for an animal to breed up adequately. So again, you got to know what your basic environment has when you, and then you start looking at your mineral program. Um, and I'm a big proponent of organic. Um, I know some people interchange it with chelated trace minerals and that I truly believe that the increased bioavailability that those type of minerals provide to cows um, help them to more adequately utilize the mineral and thus their body functions, including reproduction, health, all of that function at a higher capacity um, than if you're feeding traditional inorganic trace minerals. There was 
a lot of knowledge just shared in that little <laughs> bit. And thank you for that. So I want to go back to where you talked about knowing what your environment has to offer, as well as some of those deficiencies that maybe it might have, which are a ge- very geographically. So where can producers go to, or how can they determine maybe if they do have any deficiencies that they need to be aware of? So they can either contact an extension agent. Um, Most feed companies have a nutritionist or salesperson on staff. They can contact a a nutritionist. All those people can come out and help with testing of those feed ingredients if they need help with it. Um, But I would say it starts with sending in samples of water, feed, and just knowing what you have there. And obviously grasses are a little bit more difficult. Um, I know a lot of producers I've talked to, especially larger ones, they want a custom mineral. And I always caution them. It's a little more difficult doing customs because those grasses change from year to year. They even change from season to season as far as their mineral content. Um, But it's good to know kind of what you have for a basis in those forages. Um, So I usually, if I'm testing grasses, I'm looking more for antagonists or something that might be too high. Like in some instances, selenium could be high in forages. Um, There could be um, like some areas might have higher manganese than others and you might not need to supplement as much. So kind of looking at that more basic type information is what I use when looking at grass samples, but water, Um, Might not need to check that quite as often, but I do recommend checking every maybe four or five years and make sure your water hasn't changed that much. Um, But pretty simple, just pull samples and send it off to a lab. All right. Well, so, you know, those are great things to keep in mind and great actions to take and basic steps to get on track. Mm -hmm. But how soon before bull turnout do producers need to have that pre-breeding mineral out there for their um, cows or heifers to be consuming? So I'm very much a person because you don't know exactly what your grass is having it. I like making sure if producers can, having that mineral out year round, allowing those cows to have access year round. So then you're not playing catch up all of a sudden, right at pre-breeding. That cow, she's going to have an adequate mineral status and she's going to be ready to go into the breeding program. Um, but if you do have people that might not put mineral out year round and maybe they might pull it for a period of time, um, I would, I would say I, I prefer having that mineral out probably three or four months in advance of breeding, just to make sure her mineral as well as her vitamin status is adequate. Should producers be changing which type of mineral or maybe the different concentrations of different, um, vitamins and minerals in that mineral program as they go throughout different seasons, whether that's pre-breeding, leading up to weaning, um, calving, or is it okay to run the same program year round? Um, And it really depends on, it's more producer specific to answer that question. So there are some producers, they run the same mineral year round and there's nothing wrong with that. I would say what the biggest thing is when you're looking at a mineral program and talking to someone about it is um, the trace minerals aren't going to change quite as much. Usually those are going to stay pretty consistent throughout the year. It's going to be your more of your calcium, your phosphorus, um, more specifically phosphorus and uh, magnesium are going to be the two ones that, that are going to change depending on the season. So if you're coming into spring, and you've got, and you know, you've got some grasses that are growing quickly and you're turning calves out and you might have a problem with grass tetany. That's when you're going to want to look at a mineral alert that's going to have a higher uh, magnesium content in it. Then once those grasses kind of start maturing a little bit, once you get into summer, growth rate slows down, then you can take that high magnesium mineral out and put it, put out a, um, a mineral with lower magnesium content. Um, Now looking at phosphorus, that's another one that if producers are kind of looking at wanting to adjust their mineral program on season, um, phosphorus is one you can feed a mineral with a little lower phosphorus in the summertime, again, when grasses are green and growing. Um, And then when they start going dormant, that's when you're going to want to kind of up that phosphorus content. Um, And again, you want to make sure when you're considering that you want that calcium to phosphorus ratio to be at least a two and a half to one. Um, calcium to phosphorus, just to make sure you're keeping those balanced. Um, 
And you'll notice if you start getting out of balance or you're getting deficient in either calcium or phosphorus, you'll start seeing cows chew on just some crazy stuff. Um, and that's when you'll know you're going to start having a mineral deficiency, especially with those two macro minerals. Um, so just keep that in mind that you want to really try and keep those macro minerals balanced throughout the year. So is any of this different for cows compared to heifers that are being bred for the first time? Mm -hmm. So trace minerals, again, aren't going to change that much between those two types of cattle, it's going to be really that macro mineral again. Um, your heifers are going to have a higher requirement for calcium and phosphorus in particular. Um, so those might be minerals um, in, that you want to make sure you've got a higher calcium and phosphorus content when offering it to them. Um, and again, it's going to depend on what the rest of the diet is as well. Um, typically, those heifers are fed a little bit better than cows because they are still growing. They do have a higher nutrient demand as far as energy and protein goes. Um, so again, a balanced diet is really important, but typically the two minerals that are required in a higher amount for growing animals is going to be that calcium and phosphorus. Okay. So now my next question, you already talked about knowing your environment and knowing your resources and all of that, but what mm -hmm. about if mid breeding season, the weather takes a turn and now we're in more of a drought? How should producers adjust for that nutritionally? So it might be that they're going to have to start pulling in extra forage to feed those animals, especially if they're replacement heifers out on pasture. Obviously, droughty forage is not going to meet those heifers' requirements for growth. So that's the first thing is you're going to have to make sure protein and energy demands are being met, um, but also in those droughty forages, you really see a big decline in your vitamin content. So it might be that you're looking at a mineral that's going to ha have a higher vitamin A and vitamin E content in it to support reproduction. Because again, those vitamins are just as important just for reproduction as well as the minerals. Okay. Now, what about the form that these minerals are fed? Because I know sometimes in the winter months, you can force feed a loose mineral if you're doing a TMR, but out in the summer when they're out on pasture, you know, is it better for a loose mineral or a tub? Doesn't it matter? What are your thoughts there? Um, so again, that's something that's more producer specific. Um, most companies provide different forms of mineral supplementation, depending on the different um, producers thoughts or ideas on how it should be supplemented. Um, in my, in my thought in areas where you've got salt content changing from every water source um, and you just are having trouble controlling that intake on your loose mineral, that's where a tub might come in as a really nice option because instead of using salt, because that's how we control intake on the loose minerals is the salt content. Instead of relying on salt to control intake, you're relying on the hardness of that tub. Um, and again, salt needs to be supplemented on the side, but because it's molasses and it's a nice hard tub, Cattle can't typically overconsume it. Again, there's always errors with production processes, but most companies will help out producers if that type of situation occurs and they're overconsuming. Um, but again, if you're running into areas where you're just having trouble getting a consistent mineral intake, that's when I'd suggest you put a tub out with them. Um, but I honestly don't have one preference one way or another. I think both are a great option for producers. Um, you do have to keep in mind tubs do cost a little bit more. But again, you typically have a little bit more consistent intake with a tub um, versus a loose mineral. And of course, um, always when expect you're going to have a lower consumption in mineral, both loose and tubs, when you have those grasses fresh, green and growing in the spring and early summer, cattle are going to spend more time out grazing than they're actually going to be coming to the mineral to consume it. Okay. Now, I want to pick your brain a little bit about the bigger picture. So if you had a magic wand... And with one wave, you could change any one thing about how producers manage their cattle, either pre-breeding or during breeding season, what would you change? Oh, goodness. That's, that's a tough question to answer. Um, you know, honestly, I don't know how to answer that because you've got producers that are really, really good at management and you got some that maybe might pull their mineral out during that summertime. But I would say look at the big picture for your individual operation 
and look at the big picture for our industry. Cause you look at it right now. Um, we are at some of our lowest cattle numbers. We've been in a really long time. So that means we need to do our best as a producer to make sure we're raising an animal that's going to be going out into industry and can, per can perform. So we need to make sure that we're doing everything we can to make sure you're producing those animals that are healthy. That includes keeping a mineral out. Um, maybe talking with an extension specialist or a nutritionist and see if there's something in your program that you can fix or that you might be missing out on. Um, but I'm really take the time to look at your each individual producer's operations and see where there might be gaps. Because again, we want to make sure that we're programming animals and then it starts in utero to go out into industry that can perform. So that makes, that means we've got to make sure we're feeding the cows right. Oh, I appreciate that response. And I guess from the ROI standpoint, as producers are thinking about this investment that they make into their mineral program, where do you think the producer really sees that return on investment come to play by making sure their cattle have adequate mineral year round or that their nutrition is met year round? So it's really going to show in the number of cows that have conceived, the number of calves born that make it to weaning. Um, you want to have a reduction in health issues with those babies. And then, of course, producers get paid on weaning weights. We want to make sure that whatever they're considering for a product, that it is going to help out with their weaning weight and their animals. And I know there's a lot of feed companies that swear up and down their products will improve weaning weight. And it, it might be true, um, but take the time to talk to those salespeople, really see if that's something that'll work for them. But again, you need to look at the health aspect and again, the weaning weight aspect of that. So um, to see what minerals are gonna work best for you. So I know a lot of people, at least from my travels, maybe might not look at that health aspect quite as much as they need to. But again, you need those calves, cows calving, and you need those calves making it to weaning without having to be treated. Okay. So as we kind of wrap up, if, you know, you brought up a great point that, you know, there's a lot of different mineral companies out of there and it seems like every company has great product, right? They're obviously trying to sell it. So what questions do producers need to be asking these different reps to make sure that they are advocating for themselves and truly finding the mineral program or company that is going to work best for them. Don't be afraid to ask those feed reps for research. I mean, I think that's the biggest thing. If they're going to come out with a product that they're going to claim something on, don't be afraid to ask them to show that research to you, explain it, walk you through it. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing is, is don't be afraid to ask questions about it. Ask, don't be afraid to ask them what makes the mineral so different? Why is it working better? Um, so obviously I've worked for a feed company in the, in, in the past and still do work with Hubbard a little bit on that type of stuff. So, um, and that, that's the biggest thing is I want to make sure when I'm helping people, I want to make sure that information I'm giving them is correct and accurate. All right. Well, do you have any final thoughts before we wrap up today? I don't think so. I think I went through them all. So, um, like I said, mineral programs are really important and if you can keep them out year round, but don't forget the big picture. So, and, and don't be afraid to make sure something find or find something that fits your specific operation. All right. Well, Kadra, thank you very much for joining me today for this conversation and sharing all of your knowledge with my listeners. For those of you listening, if you want more information, be sure to go to the description or the show notes on my website, and there will be links there to all tech with a few more resources for you guys to learn more. Okay, folks, that's a wrap on that one. And just a reminder that if you want more information about this topic, please head to my description. There is a link there for you guys to go ahead and learn more. Um, remember to stay curious, advocate for yourself and ask questions. With that, have a great day.